The United States' plan to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan by fall is drawing mixed emotions from both its war veterans and those who live there. The move would end America's longest conflict, which has cost the lives of 2,448 American service members and cost an estimated $2 trillion. Tom Porter served there for a year as a Navy public affairs officer. He says he had hoped for more progress. There's a, a common term that we use because uh, uh, the term is forgotistan. Um, because the American public has largely forgotten that we've been over there. So much of our treasure and, and lives have been sacrificed uh, over there, and so many veterans have, have come back uh, with, uh, with various wounds of war. Um, so I just naturally, like a lot of folks, had envisioned um, uh, some greater level of success before we, we withdrew. There are just 2,500 troops left in Afghanistan, compared to a peak of 100,000 back in 2011. President Joe Biden has set a September 11th deadline for withdrawing. Exactly 20 years after al-Qaeda's attacks on the World Trade Center and Pentagon that triggered the war. Withdrawing is a risk Biden is prepared to take at the start of his presidency, one that proved too great for his predecessors. There's a chance al-Qaeda could return or that the Taliban insurgency could topple the US-backed government in Kabul. Locals are scared of that possible outcome and aren't convinced Afghanistan can cope without foreign support. It's a worrying situation and people believe that if foreign troops leave the country, there will be a civil war. I don't think the foreigners will leave our country, but if they do, I'm sure Afghanistan doesn't have the capability to stand on its own feet. Biden says the US will begin the withdrawal from Afghanistan on May 1st. Until then, Afghans will wait with uncertainty for whether peace is possible in their country.